The COVID-19 pandemic brought in an unprecedented era around the world. Response from health providers and resource advocates was critical, especially for our most vulnerable communities. I think what the pandemic did was really exasperate the challenges that we were already facing. And one of the things that was most dire and critical in serving this community, of course, was the, really the shutdown that we had with the pandemic. You know, the number one risk factor for COVID was being over 65. And so remember in the early days, older adults were told, shelter in place, stay home, you're super at risk. So that's what older adults did. And older adults were not able to get out, go to their regular routines. That really adds to their socialization. So that was the biggest challenge. Even with our Meals on Wheels program, where we serve a, a 500 hot meals a day, we were not able to cross the thresholds and enter the home as we were before the pandemic. So the biggest challenge was really seeing our older adults decline with their socialization needs. I think food insecurity became even bigger than it ever was. Transportation um, services dried up, in-home services dried up. So there was a lot of doctor's offices closed. They couldn't get um, what they needed. County councils on aging, along with countless stakeholders and agencies, mobilized crisis response teams to provide essential services for older adults. So you saw a lot of community partners come together and rally for food boxes. Um, I know that we uh, delivered 20,000 bags for filling up with food to be delivered to older adults. We've also worked with community partners to prepare meals um, and deliver FEMA boxes. We had, you know, people that were about 250 people that were getting, that needed dialysis cancer treatments, you know, those things you can't put on hold or people will die. So it was really important we provide those services. We were partnering with all sorts of people, with community-based services, with counties, with health departments, with emergency response, with churches. We moved our food pantry to a, to a drive-through model um, so that we could pack up all the goods, you know, the perishable and non-perishable items and take them out to the client directly. And that also allowed us to serve more individual households. So that was a big help. We crafted something called Market Night. So we had four, four different Market Nights. Our program, Denver Connect, uh, we are a pop-up office. We're out there in the community. We're talking to people, finding out what their needs are, um, connecting them to a resource. And everything was done virtually. Um, so I think that was really tough to switch gears and um, work with older adults who may have not had access to uh, resources virtually. I realized early on that if we didn't start paying our community-based service providers to do different kinds of work, they were gonna have to close their doors. So we changed our model. We paid them to go get food and deliver it to their clients. We paid um, our providers to do outreach to their clients because isolation was a problem. Older adults remember all the conflicting information we were getting about COVID. And it was a challenge because as a leader, you really do know you're sending folks out potentially to be ill and sick. And that was just something that I had to mentally reconcile every single day, even with all the PPE, even with when you know shots became available. Staff got sick, some got really sick, um, and had to be hospitalized and have ongoing issues. Um, our clients, a lot of our clients got sick, um, were hospitalized, many died. It was a tough time. We were constantly changing, constantly trying to figure out how to meet the needs that were out there. We were hearing desperate calls from people um, and, and felt helpless because we couldn't get what they needed or all the things that they needed. We did our best, but sometimes we couldn't. As we begin to emerge from the pandemic, we reflect on just how we made our way through it and even to consider what we've learned. They were troopers. I, I, I mean, so many people stepped up so many kind and caring people, right? When our older volunteers stayed home, but then those folks um, in the community that 
didn't have to go to work or were displaced, they started volunteering. So we started seeing younger volunteers, professional volunteers stepping up to, to serve in their community. That was inspirational. So I think what we learned is, you know, older adults will use technology. They will adopt it if they're guided to it and if it's very purposeful and meaningful for their lives. We kicked off a pilot to, we gave uh, 55 Chromebooks to some older adults uh, right now who are learning how to Zoom, learning how to uh, connect. We've also learned that funders can deliver dollars quicker than they did traditionally before the pandemic and that we don't have to have all these committees and convenings to really get money out the door to the folks that really need it. I think that's what we've learned. Our community is very resilient and our nonprofit and community partners really stepped up to the plate to offer whatever help they could. There were warriors out there. Um, they've always been out there. They did the most amazing job during this time of COVID. Um, we're super resourceful and dedicated and I'm so glad they're being recognized.